Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist D.T. from weatherwisk.com, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. It's uh, 10 o'clock here in the east, uh, 7 o'clock on the west coast. It's Thursday, August 22nd. Let's talk weather because that's the most fascinating topic of all time, and there's lots to talk about. In this particular episode or edition of This Week in Weather, we'll be talking about the Midwest late-season heat wave that's about to unfold, if it hasn't already. And then we'll also be talking about two possible Northeast U.S. Dershow events, one August 28th, another one maybe September 2nd. And then also, where are all the tropical cyclones? What's happened? How come things aren't developing? It's mid-August. What's going on? Where are all the forecasts? Are we in trouble? Is it going to be a busted hurricane season? Blah, blah, blah. Let's get right to it. All right, here's the uh, map from August 16th, uh, last a week ago. You remember this deep trough here in the eastern United States? We saw that. That's a very uh, impressive-looking trough. You can see it right in here. And here's our ridge coming up here. You saw that. There's the ridge right in, in this area. Uh, and it was a, we had a lot, a lot of cool weather. Everyone was talking about it. It was very impressive, very nice to see in mid-August. Of course, now the pattern has changed here a little bit, obviously. The trough on the east coast is now gone, as you can see. It's now moved out into here. See that? And then we have our ridge here. And you see this trough developing in the eastern Pacific? That I mean when that teleconnects to this ridge. See, that's called teleconnection in here. So as a result, that's one of the reasons why it's turning so beastly hot. And this is an impressive heat wave coming up. I mean, this is nothing to sneeze at. Now, this is 120 hours for valid for Tuesday. Uh, August 27th, and we can see very clearly where the pattern is shaped up into a devastating heat dome pattern. Here's one trough here, here's the other trough here, and there's the heat dome. And the, these reds represent mid-90s. I mean, that's impressive heat for late August. Not July, folks. This is late August, almost September. That is pretty darn impressive, if you ask me. Then again, nobody asked me. So anyway, these are the max temperatures uh, for Thursday, uh, August uh, 29th. And we can see how impressive the heat is. Let me point out some of these amazing temperatures. Look at those temperatures in Chicago in the upper 90s, Des Moines near 100, uh, St. Louis upper 90s near 100. Look at the 100 plus here in South Dakota. Wow. Look at all Nebraska. This is impressive heat, to say the least. And uh, and then now let's take a look at the pattern now further down the road and see how we might be seeing some possible dirtios. Now, this is the European model for uh, August 28th, uh, 100 uh, 144 or six days out and we can see our troughs here on the you know in the east eastern pacific another one in the western atlantic ocean there's our dome centered very nicely over kansas and oklahoma and missouri stretching up into southern nebraska southwest missouri arkansas very impressive feature so that's a impressive map for late in the season any time of the year actually now let's take a look at, at see what happened last year when we had the big one in the northeast the big deer show this is the upper air map and the surface map from uh 8 p.m june 27th and what i want to point out here let me go to my marker so you can see this is that we had this upper low here in the trough and the other one here see this one here now notice the ridge see the ridge right in between what's going to happen is this feature is going to rip the top of it right off you'll see the next slide here and that's going to help set up the uh, pattern now this is 5 p.m on the 28th and you can see the ridge is being destroyed here you can see let me call out the markers you can see it see right in here that's being wiped out this feature is coming in and note here comes the powerful jet behind it and all that energy which is going to set the thunderstorms and this was during an impressive massive heat wave i'm sure everybody remembers how hot it was in the midwest and the northeast last year when that when this horrible dershio came through so um and then finally this is the morning of the 29th when the system hit that night and you can see that the uh, the uh, ridge is now gone all the energy is coming straight in from the pacific ocean and that helps set up the thunderstorms what's important to note here is look where the dome is down here see that now, as you can see, in our setup, we go back a couple of slides, the dome here is over Kansas and Nebraska, not over Georgia. So that means that if anything develops, it's probably going to be further to the north. OK, so I don't think this first one is going to be a mid-Atlantic one. Now, this is the European for day six, a little further out in time. But we can clearly see a disturbance of some type here. Um, and let me show you what I'm talking about. You see the bend in the height lines right in here? 
this is some sort of piece of energy in the jet stream. And you can see how the lines spread out in different directions. That means difluence or, or a divergent flow aloft, and that sets the potential for a possible series of strong thunderstorms in the Northeast, maybe even a Dershio event on the 28th, which is why I'm talking about it. And this is the European model showing the rainfall for the 28th into the 29th. And we can clearly see a streak of very heavy rains here, uh, you know, two-inch rains you can see right in this area. That's, that's where the system might be coming through, maybe. It's just, we don't know that yet. It's just something to watch out for. The pattern clearly favors it. This is the GFS now for Monday, 102 hours out. And again, we can see a pretty strong disturbance here in the GFS right here. You can see it. Um, boom, right in there. See that? And then look how the lines spread in different directions. Di divergent flow. There's your dome. So the GFS is showing something to, to watch out for as well. And then you can see it even on the 29th and, 20, and the 28th, more the same sort of thing. A divergent flow aloft coming out of the Great Lakes into, the, into New England. Potential for significant storms to develop there. Now, by day 10, the European breaks down the dome and we show a ridge. But notice what happens here. The ridge actually slides to the south. Uh-oh, that might be a problem for the Mid-Atlantic states. And let me explain to you why. Because, um, again, let me uh, call up my marker here. See the flow this way? then this way, then this way. It's divergent. It's spreading out over time as it goes out. If you get any sort of thunderstorms in here, it could drop down here and develop rapidly. So this might be the one for the mid-Atlantic states down the road. Maybe, maybe. Not the forecast yet, just something to be concerned with. We'll talk about it more next week. And this is the uh, G GFS now by 190 hours for uh, on the 30th. And we can see the dome is beginning to break down here a little bit now, finally. And uh, the pattern maybe shows signs of shifting. But you can clearly see, again, divergent flow, very powerful in the, in the eastern United States. OK. Now, this is what happens at the day 10, the European ensembles. Again, remember how we talked about how with the one from last year, the dome had shifted to the south over the southeastern states. Look what happens at day 10, September 1st, September 2nd. The dome, which was over here, is now down here. And the jet stream now comes further south. And it splits. You see how the diversion of flow in all different directions over the Northeast? That could be a dangerous sign, again, maybe for the North, for the Mid-Atlantic states on September 2nd. Now, this is the uh, GFS ensembles for uh, day 12. And we can see what's happening here is the models are beginning to show a pattern, begin to shift a little bit. See the ridge coming up here and over, the, over Japan and Kamchatka? And that, in turn, causes a trough to form here in the Central Pacific. And that causes a ridge to begin to form on the West Coast, you know, Western United States. And that pulls the heat dome back to the West Coast. And you get a trough in the Eastern U.S. One thing leads to another, which leads to another. That's called teleconnections and wave physics. And it's the greatest thing in the world. And now here's the GFS with 384 hours out. We've got a trough in the Eastern United States. Temperatures are back to seasonal levels for early September. Now, if we look at the ensembles, this is the GFS ensembles here. And we can see the mean pattern. The mean pattern clearly shows some sort of ridge trying to form here, a bit of a trough here. And look at the, one, the models that support that idea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 of the uh, 20 ensemble members are supportive of that idea. This is the uh, Canadian, even more supports it, as you can see. Some of these look, this is a pretty, some of these are showing pretty impressive cold patterns coming in here and here and here. These are pretty impressive patterns. This one as well, this one. So uh, maybe, like I said, it's got the potential down the road. And then this is finally the Navy ensemble. And again, a lot of members support this idea as well. Not as much, though. Now, let's talk about the tropics. This is the afternoon satellite picture. And we can see a little bit of something, some sort of tropical low trying to form right up in here. Uh, and again, that is uh, for, um, I guess this would be for the, uh, yeah, for today, actually, this afternoon, I think this picture came out. Yes, it did. So uh, that's what the model is trying to show anyway. Uh, that's a satellite picture, I should say. Now, let's talk about the MGO for one second. Now, I showed this last week that this shows a breakdown of which phase of the MGO is favorable. And as you can see in here, um, clearly phase one and phase two support enhanced activity. See that? while phase six and phase seven support negative activity. So the MJO clearly enhances tropical cyclone activity when it's in phase one and phase two. Okay, we got that part. The problem is that this is the MJO almost all summer. This now goes back to almost three months, 90 days. And you can see once we got past Memorial Day weekend, what happened here is that the MJO in June was in three, four, six, where it turned dry in the, in the Midwest. And then it went seven and eight and it turned in and it died. So since July, 
really a tenth, the MJO has been in the neutral zone. And it has had no impact and it's been no impetus, no drive to change the pattern to allow for a better hurricane pattern to develop in the tropical Atlantic Ocean. So as a result, through all of July and all of August, we have not seen the MGO go into phase eight, phase one or phase two, none at all. And that's a problem because you can't get the uh, tropical Atlantic to begin to change. Now, we're seeing signs of that coming down the pike. This is the European model going out to September 20th. And notice that it does, in fact, go out here to fa phase one and phase two, which is the strong development tropical activity phase for MJO. We see there very clearly. This here is the uh, British model showing the same sort of thing. And this is the folks from the uh, University of Albany. You can see very clearly it moves into phase one and phase two during September. So these are all positive signs that the uh, tropics are about to turn really stormy. But there are other factors to take into consideration. Now, this is from the Climate Prediction Center, something I used before. Many of you do not use it or haven't seen it before or have forgotten about it. This represents the 200 millibar positive or uh, uh, vertical velocity potential anomalies. In other words, rising and sinking air. This is associated to some degree to the MJO. And as the MGO moves to the different impulses, you see this energy as well. Now, I want to show you how this has developed over the past few weeks, and you can see why we have had very low tropical activity. This is very significant stuff, so pay attention. Now, this is the map from July 23rd, all right? All the energy, this stuff all moves from west to east, all of it, okay? Every single map, the energy goes this way, this direction, got it? Like this, okay? Now, this is when we had uh, Dorian back on July 23rd. You see this little green blob? All the green energy shows positive or rising air motion. So we had a little blob of green energy over the western, off the west coast of Africa, and then we had Dorian. But the problem is that Dorian has to come this direction, right? And we have all the sinking air down here, which destroyed it. Very strong sinking air over the main tropical Atlantic Ocean. So Dorian didn't get a chance to develop, okay? Well, that's Dorian. What about what happened afterwards? This is August 6th. Look at the huge amount of sinking air. My God over all of the tropical Atlantic in this area. Wow, you can't get anything to form here in early August. Deadsville. Now, we have another surge of positive energy here. Remember the green? See that rising air? But look where it is. This is the equator. This is all to the south. Nothing coming in from the Atlantic Ocean at all. From the Pacific into North America, then into the Atlantic. Nothing. Okay? And then finally, if we look at here at uh, August 16th, there's nothing coming in. Remember, we want green, you want tropical activity to form, then what you want is you want the green stuff, you remember? The green stuff, well, there's nothing, where is it? There's no green stuff, it's all down here. And we had a little blob of green here, boom. This is exactly when Aaron, Aaron formed, look at this. Amazing coincidence, isn't it? August 16th, and of course what happened is Aaron moved into the brown stuff, the sinking air, boom, dead, just like that. Yeah, it does work out, folks, really does. Now, what is it currently showing? Oh, look at this. Change is coming. Yes, indeed. August 21st. How about that? Look at that huge surge of positive energy, positive vertical potential anomalies coming in from this direction. Remember, all of this goes this way. goes this way from west to east. Now, right now, we've got a lot of sinking air. See that? But that's going to go away, and this is coming in. Okay? So let me clear it again so you can see it. This is going over here, and this huge energy of blob is coming in. When it comes in late August, September, that's when things are going to fire, and there's another very strong one coming in behind it. So this represents a significant change in the tropical pattern coming up here. That, and along with the uh, MJO coming e into phase one and phase two, represents a significant change. And finally, the, we're seeing signs of an El Nino developing. I posted this on the Facebook page. The CFS is now showing significant warming. The European is showing significant warming as well. And obviously, this has major implications for the autumn and for the winter forecast. Whether you're trading the stuff in South America or Australia, well, El Nino means a big difference in the type of rainfall and temperature patterns for those areas, or whether you're winter forecasting, it has a significant impact as well. This is meteorologist DT. I'll talk to you soon.